I mean by drum layering is less of building a beat with many different types of drums. So maybe you have a hi-hat, you have a shaker, you have a ride, a crash, percussion, clap, whatever. Um, that's more of drum arrangement. Drum layering, at least the way I see it, is layering different samples of the same sound to kind of make the mix of that sound sound better. So for example, maybe you have a clap sample and you layer another one and you pan it or you, you add another clap and all of these claps are playing on the same beat. So, you know, it sounds like one sound as opposed to, you know, multiple different sounds. So that's what I mean by drum layering. Um, it's something that when I started producing, I didn't think about much. I was more concerned with, you know, just getting my drums on the grid to kind of make the beat or having one sample for each drum. And then I would kind of reference my tracks to tracks that I would play out DJing and like other producers tracks that I loved. And I was always like, well, why do my drums sound like not as big as these, these guys' drums, not as punchy? And once I started to layer my drums and really put time and attention into that, I noticed that my tracks hit a lot harder. Um, they sounded a lot bigger, you know, just listening on my iPhone as opposed to speakers. So drum layering can really help you kind of tackle all areas of a mix down. Usually when we think, at least when I think of a mix down, you have a uh, volume, so how loud something is. You have the frequency that that sound exists at. And you also have the stereo field, which is how wide that sound is. And drum layering allows us to kind of tackle all three. So that's, that's the overview on drum layering. In this video, we're going to go over how to layer your drums for Tech House sounds. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more advanced, a little bit more mixing focused. So if you have headphones, I recommend putting them on because we're going to be focusing a lot on the stereo field. It's a lot easier to kind of hear that with headphones. Um, and I just have a reference track up here. This is a guy, Martin Eichen. You know, he's a killer producer, I think like top top five or something in the Tech House B-Port always like, you know, sales. Uh, it's been around for a minute. He really knows what he's doing with his drums. Um, so I want to just play this track kind of as an example because I find that the drums in this track are really punchy. And you can kind of almost hear the layering as we go from the intro to a little bit later on in the intro. You can hear how much bigger the drums get. Um, so let's listen. Oops, one second, guys. Let me just change the audio stream. <laughs> So you can hear the hi-hat is a little bit um, quiet here. There's no low end in the bass. Yeah, you can definitely hear that each of those drum sounds and this is a very simple beat, right? It's just kick, open, hi-hat, and then clap, pretty much. There's some stuff going on in the background. But each of those sounds sounds really big and nice. And I find that if you can kind of, when you're starting a new beat, if you can get all three of those sounds sounding really good off the bat, you're setting yourself up to make a better track. So um, let's, let's do that right now. I'm going to mute this, and I'm going to show you guys how I would layer... Um, drums to kind of get a big sound. So I have my kick section and you can see I already set it up to layer. I have a low kick, a mid kick, and then this is a kick plugin, um, kick generating plugin that I often use to make like a high kick. So we'll, we'll ignore that for now. But um, you know, the first step is, and the step to all this is sample selection. You know, you, at the end of the day, your ears and your taste will lead you to pick certain samples over others. You know, maybe you're into one style versus another. Um, there's no real right or wrong thing here, but certain samples just tend to go with each other better, and you can't really teach that. It's more of an ear thing. Um, but there are tools we can use to make a sample that you pick a little bit better. So right now I'm in the Wave Alchemy Drums Tools folder. These samples are really good. You know, we were broken up into process drums, tape drums, and vinyl drums. Um, maybe we'll go to the process drums to start. They have all these categories. So I'm looking for a kick here that's going to be my kind of low end punchy kick. You know, maybe I'll go here to deep and minimal. So I'm just kind of like listening. A lot of these are a little bit short or have kind of like a weird tail to them. I'm looking for something that's just short and punchy. This one's pretty good. So let's throw this guy in here. Oops. 
So this is going to go in our low section. And let's make a little beat. So I can already tell, you know, looking at the reference track here, right? Martin's kick kind of ends right at this halfway point, And this one, the tail is going on much further. So I'm definitely going to want to shape this to make it a little bit punchier because when we have a baseline, this really long kick is going to kind of get in the way of that. So I'm just going to use the fades here to kind of shorten this up a bit. You can hear the difference. This is very like big roomy. It's not very tech housey. So I kind of like this lane. So let's consolidate that. So cool. And we can also, you know, if you're ever using a reference track and you want to kind of see what key the kick is in, you know, you could go to your reference track, put a high pass EQ or a low pass EQ curve on, double click here, and then just play this and see where the kick is sitting. So you just kind of put your cursor right where that peak is of the mountain. So it's saying G sharp is right there. And then we can go back to our kick and do the same thing. This one's a little bit lower. This one looks like it's, I think, F or F sharp. I can't tell exactly. Um, but like if we wanted to, you know, make this in G sharp, we could go up to semitones, change this to complex. So now that, they kind of sound like the same key. So let's use that higher one. All right, so now we have this kick, right? And I could just like, maybe like a more amateur producer would just be like, oh, I found my kick, let's go to the next sound. But I kind of know that there's a couple things missing from this kick that would really help it be a lot uh, louder in the mix and a lot punchier. So let's go back to the reference track. And, you know, we don't have the kick isolated, but we can still kind of hear what's going on with the kick, so. <laughs> You listen there's a big there's a lot more higher frequencies at the beginning of this kick that kind of help it stick out in the mix and I think that our kick here you know if we look at this EQ it fades off a lot when we get to the higher frequency so around what is this 500 600 Hertz it really kind of goes under this zero decibel line and you can just kind of tell with your ears like it has like a good amount of punch in the mids and the low end, but it doesn't really have um, a top end to it. And that top end can really help your kick stand out, especially for people that are listening on um, devices that don't really have bass, like your phone or like a laptop or like shitty speakers. That tick is gonna make that kick, you know, more noticeable. So um, in this case, I would find a kick that has I would listen just to the beginning of that kick and find one that has um, a nice kind of punch to it. So let's go back here to our bass drums folder. And you know we have short and snappy, that could be a good category. We have fat and punchy, like maybe we'll start here. So there's definitely a tick at the beginning of that. Kind of hear that, sounds like a rim shot. This one's kind of interesting. It has like a digital almost sound like a hi-hat there, right? So let's use this as an example. So this is gonna be like our mid kind of bass line. Sorry, our mid kick here. Um, and we already have all the lows from this kick, so we really don't need any of the low end information on this one. And there's two ways we can get rid of it. We can use an EQ to cut it out, but that's, you know, I rather just fade all that out by getting, you know, shortening the clip because um, that's gonna really just get rid of it completely, the EQ, will help, but uh, this is, I guess, a little bit of a cleaner method. So let's go back here. So you can definitely hear there's that tick sound. You know, I can change how this sounds. Um, and, you know, I always like to put an EQ on this as well because there may still be some low end information in that first little section of the kick. And we, we still want to keep that just on the green one, which is our low kick. So. You know, I'll take this. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of bass still there. Maybe somewhere around here or something. Um, and then this is, again, this is drum layering, right? So it, the whole point is that it's supposed to follow the same pattern as your original sample. Um, 
again there's no rules like you could you know do something with your layers and that is actually an arrangement trick but just for the sake of this video we're, we're just trying to get this one sound as big as possible so I'm gonna listen to these two together totally different right without it it sounds I wouldn't say dull but the energy is not as there you know it's not the energy is not as loud and here it's almost too much. So this is where mixing kind of comes into play. Um, and the way I like to think about it is this is like my original sample. And this sample is the one that I'm using to layer on top. So there's two ways you can kind of do this. You can either bring this very loud and then bring the volume gradually down until you just barely notice that that sample's there. Or you can do it the other way where you bring it all the way down to zero volume and then bring it up slowly until it sits where you want. Um, in this case, it's already a little bit too loud to start, so we can start at zero dB. And in Ableton, if you hold shift um, and just drag this down, it's gonna give you a little bit more control as you drag your mouse, so it's a little bit easier to get precise. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna play it, and then I'm just gonna move the volume of this one down until it's at a volume that I like. So let's try this. too loud a little bit too loud somewhere around here I kind of like um, so let's remember that number 10.3 we can try the the same thing the other way around and see if maybe that gives us a better idea of where we want this to sit so I'm gonna bring this down to zero bring it up So doing it the other way, I was actually like, I liked it a little bit quieter. So I thought I liked it um, at 10.3, but then starting from zero, I ended up kind of in like negative 17. I brought it back up to 10.3 and then I kind of confirmed in my head, oh, it does sound a little bit tighter, quieter. So it's kind of like, I think it's a good idea to try it both ways. Um, so yeah, so now you can kind of hear the difference um, without the layer with the layer. It's a lot more punchy and it because it has these higher frequencies, it's going to help make it sound louder without actually, you know, pushing this volume up too much. And that's an important mixing technique is this thing this idea of perceived loudness. We want things to sound as big as possible without really having the volume get as big as possible because that's going to give us more room when we master the track later on if we can kind of save that headroom and make it sound really big without having the volume go up so much it's going to allow us to get an overall louder track and um, a cleaner mix down so you know if we look at the eq up here now and i turn off the high the mid kick and i turn it on you can kind of see in these highs especially above you know 5k you see all these little um, hairs kind of come up that's all from this mid kick being added without it so it's going to make it a little bit brighter a little bit more energetic um, usually two samples for a kick is good like something for the low end and something to give it a little bit of a tick again it really depends on the style of track you're making i know some amazing songs that have a very low subby kick and there's you know no real high information and that's totally fine it's just depends on the style of track and we're kind of referencing this Martin Eichen one so I knew that the kick needed a little bit more punch. Um, finally I'll show you guys what this bassism plugin is. I think it's around 30 or 40 bucks. It's just a kick generator plugin so you can kind of um, pick the frequency of your kick which is nice. Uh, if you want to kick in a certain key it has all these presets so you know this is a MIDI device as opposed to audio so let's draw some MIDI notes in here. C3 is always going to be just the root kind of sound. Let's do like quarter notes. And so if we open this plugin up, we can like change all these parameters. They have all these presets. I like this 909 like one because a lot of house music is made with the 909 drum machine. And then I go back to the main here. Um, and usually I use this if I need to add a little bit of like a tick at the beginning and this start frequency allows you to kind of get this really loud or more dull so you can kind of see the difference. So 
almost like a laser pitch kind of sound, very like psy trancey. Um, and usually I don't have it that high. I usually have it somewhere between like around here. Um, and then, you know, with this, I can kind of use this EQ to get that tick. And then the same concept applies. So I would mix this in. I wanted that tick kind of sound. I could mix that together. Um, cool. So that's that's how I layer kicks. That's how the way I think about it. I usually find a good low end kick. If I decide that it needs a little bit more punch, I go and look for um, a mid kick that has or a high kick that has that kind of initial transient sound I want. I shape it. I EQ it. Um, sometimes you know I did a pretty much just like a low cutoff, but. You, you can do some more fancy cueing here. So you can maybe find some frequencies you don't like. Maybe we don't like that resonance. You lower that a little bit. You know, maybe you want a little bit more mids here. And then, yeah, so you can do that with any of these uh, layers. Uh, the most important takeaway here is that you want. Uh, the volume of these to kind of work with each other like if you listen to this it doesn't sound like three different kicks it sounds like one kick sample but if I have this super loud it just kind of sounds off a little bit so um, it's a that's the the real trick is to have these all sit at a volume that work with each other um, and then once you layer things together you know it's always if you put an effect on this group, it's going to kind of glue these sounds together because it's going to apply to all of them. Um, and this isn't as important with kicks as I would say maybe with claps and hats because a lot of those samples have very loud transients. But, you know, if you're playing three claps together and they all have a loud transient, that can cause the volume to really surge up. And so maybe you want to put a compressor or something on the kick uh, or whatever sound drum sound you're layering to kind of catch any peaks that may go above a certain volume level um, you know you could put some saturation if you have in Ableton we have drum bus which is really great at kind of making things a little bit bigger and louder so I could put this drum bus here and then maybe bring this dry wet down a little bit You know, maybe I put another EQ and then I EQ all three of these sounds together. So maybe it's a little bit too much there. You know, and now you're shaping all three of the samples together. So um, I like to do that kind of EQing on the actual group up here. That's where these effects are sitting. Um, cool. All right. So let's go to the next sound, which is um, probably, in my opinion, the second or third most important uh, drum sound in a Tech House track, which is your clap. That's going to come in on the two and the four. So if we listen back on the reference. Um, yeah, it's just the essential house sound. So, you know, again, it depends on what style track you're making. Some claps, you want them to be really big and wide and take over everything. Some you want it to be really short and almost like snarey or you want them to sound very unique. Um, it really depends. So um, in this case, we're just going to kind of go for something that like what Martin's doing here. It's kind of like a blend of like a 909 clap and like a more digital sound. Um, it's not very like acoustic sounding. So I have my clap group and you can see I already have this set up for different layers. So we have a center, a left. There should be a right. I think this is supposed to be called right. Let me rename that and a texture layer. So the idea is that the center is going to be like your main kind of clap sound, the one that's the most prominent. The left and right are going to help provide a little bit of width to that center clap. And then the texture will either maybe add a little bit of grit on top of it or just give it a little bit of uniqueness. So let's take this um, center channel and I'm going to go back to the wave alchemy drum tools because these are just amazing drums um, maybe here we want to go to the tape drums these have tape distortion on them so let's go to the process machine so 
So here's a cool clap. Very long tail, right? But we always have the fade tool in Ableton, so I'm not too concerned about that. And this should come in on the two and on the four. Um, and I already know that that is going to be way too long, that reverb. I want my drums to be short, snappy, and punchy. So I'm going to use this fade to shorten it up. Yeah, it's way too loud. So let's bring this down. Still a little bit too long, that tail. And uh, I'm going to shorten the actual sample and then long this. That's way better. So I'll show you guys what we started with versus what we ended with. So this was the original sample. This is what we ended up with. Way cleaner. No, none of that tail. Um, so yeah, I really like, I don't know, this sample was just very big, very punchy. Um, so that's going to be our center clap. So let's copy that out. loud so I'm slowly bringing the volume down so all right so we found our center clap now I'm gonna look for some other claps that I can pan a little bit left and a little bit right so I'm gonna pan this one left this one right and I don't want to use a sample that's too similar to this one for two reasons one if it's too similar and it plays at the same time I may run into this phasing issue where the waveforms start to cancel each other out and it's going to sound um, very kind of like a flanger or phasers on the sound it's going to dull it out um, so I want to use I want to find a drum a clap sound that's a little bit different than this um, just to make sure I'm kind of safe when it comes to phasing so you know maybe we we'll go to the process drums let's go to claps we can go to process machines So here's one that's very punchy type sound. Uh, I'm going to pan this one. Let's just do it a hard left, so 50 left. And what this means is that basically um, right now we have a stereo sound. You can see there's like two, there's a left and a right. 50 left means that we're bringing the volume of the right side down all the way. So we're just hearing the volume of this left one and it's going to make it come in on our left headphones just like that. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing with a right sound, so we can kind of listen to the way this clap sounds at the moment. It's a little bit hard to notice this one, but I'll show you guys how we can really hear that. Um, so here's another one that's, I like this clap. It's a dirty clap, let's maybe shorten it a little bit so they're all kind of on the same level. Bring this one down. Similar volume here, negative 12 dB. Take this to the right. So, whoops, sorry, my mouse. So let's go left, right, together. Whoops. Very wide, kind of big sound, um, and they're they're sitting in volume under this clap because they're not. This is supposed to be the the loudest clap layer you hear. These are there to just kind of add and give it a little bit more um, width. So I'm going to solo this and let's maybe copy this out so we can kind of hear it. So that's just the original clap. Makes it a lot bigger and wider. Um, and one way I like to check this, and this is a free plugin. Um, I highly recommend you get this. For, if you just Google Voxengo MSED, you should go to their website. You can download it for Windows or Mac. Um, it's just a little bit of a mid-side utility. And what I like to do is I like to mute the mono signals so I can just hear the stereo, which is the left-right signals. So that's the original clap. And then when I add these two, it's a little bit subtle, but you can kind of hear, especially maybe if I bring these up in volume. You can hear how loud these are because they're being panned left and right. Um, and so 
they're really adding a lot of width to this original sample and they're adding a little bit of character as well so um, yeah that that's kind of what I'm going for with these left right panning you don't always have to pan these left and right so you know maybe you don't really want a wide clap and you want your clap to be more mono let's say you have a lot of other wide things going on in your track like maybe a really big vocal or like a synth line or something and you just you're you know you don't want your clap to be too wide you can keep these at center and just use the volume just like we did with the kick to add some texture here you know the other thing you can look at is like the transient so I actually this is a new computer so I forgot to change the preferences but um, you can fade the beginning of the sounds here so maybe one of these claps is providing the transient which is that initial hit like it looks like this one starts right at zero the sound while these two take a little bit of time for it to come in so you know maybe you decide you want one of them to be the the snap to the sound and you fade out the other one so that this one provides the main kind of snap it's going to be a little bit more prevalent when we go to hi-hats next but um, it's still something to look out for with claps so if we listen here you know maybe we So yeah, let's let's do a little comparison. So this is without the panning. This is just having everything stay, you know, the way it was. So this is still the loudest. Well, maybe not the loudest. You can hear how much punchier this these two layers add to this original clap, um, mostly because there's going to be new frequencies that may not be there. Um, maybe new processing or something on the sound, saturation, harmonics, whatever it is, it's making it a lot bigger and brighter. Um, and that's kind of what you're going for with claps. I also have this texture one, you know, maybe you have like a really weird clap sound, like we have these synthetic and noise claps. You can kind of hear there's like a, a graininess to this. So let's, let's try this. You know, maybe you want some of that tail. Maybe you want to fade this. So it's just adding a little bit of noise, kind of, these high frequencies. You can kind of see them on the EQ. Um, and then one thing I forgot to talk about here is we haven't really done any EQing, and EQing is definitely really important. So again, the volume, in my opinion, is the most important, but EQing kind of comes next because you don't really need all these claps to be hitting on the exact same frequency. So, you know, each of these layers should probably have an EQ on it. Um, and then you can kind of decide just based on which sample sounds like what, which area to EQ. So this one, a lot of mids right here. That's the loudest part. Don't really need any low subs in this, right? So take that out. And maybe this one, we can take away some of those highs since we're going to be adding those in with the other samples. Um, so we can, you know, this whole area, we can kind of duck a little bit, maybe make the cue a little bit wider. It's a little bit duller now, and we're going to be saving some volume now, right? We shaved off some volume, and that's going to help to get the clap um, to get our overall track not as high as a volume but still sounding really big because there's really no difference audibly that we're going to hear once we layer it by having this extra little volume in. Um, let's go to this one. I like around there. Maybe I lower it a little bit here. Take out those lows. And then let's go to this one. So this one has a lot of high, so I want to do maybe a high boost. And then definitely a low cut as well. Maybe cut those mids a little bit higher up since these two kind of have the mids. And then on this clap, you know, we can really just cut the lows, maybe boost the highs a little bit. Sounding pretty good to me. Um, so that's the clap and 
Oh, whoops, we were listening in stereo that whole time, so let's go back to mono. Sorry, so we were we were just listening. Sometimes I do this. I had with just the stereo, so all that EQing was just EQing based on what we heard in stereo. So I want to just double check that we're, you know, it sounds good in mono. It's definitely a little bit loud. Maybe shorten a couple of these up a little bit. pretty good all right cool um, and then on the clap group same thing as the kick right you could put a drum bus you could do some EQing maybe you wanted to be brighter maybe you wanted to be duller maybe you wanted maybe you found a resonant frequency in here that sounded like maybe that you didn't like that sound so you want to duck it a little bit here um that you could do this on the group i like fab filter saturn there's a basic saturator plug preset still a little bit loud um okay let's go to hats so for hats using a house track that's going to be providing a lot of the high frequencies it's going to be providing a lot of the energy to the track the rhythm the groove um, but today we're just going to be focused on your main open hi-hat, which is the one that comes in between uh, the kicks. So if we go to the reference, you can see this sound right here that comes in in between every kick. Um, every There are eight of them. Uh, they're on the eighth note. So let's listen here. So this is, yeah, definitely a huge sound in Tech House. Um, and every track is going to sound different. Every hat is going to, you know, it really depends on what you're trying to go for. Um, in this case, I'm going to just go for like a kind of open hat sound with not too long of a tail, not too short of a tail. If you listen to like Dirty Bird and those guys, a lot of their hats are shorter. They use closed hats, but I think we're going to use an open hat here. Um, so you have three different layers that I usually use. There's the open, which is kind of, again, your main hat sound. There's a shaker layer that's there to add a little bit of mid punch to it. And then you have a transient layer um, that can add a little bit of a tick at the beginning. This is often a closed hi-hat. So let's go looking for an open hi-hat first. Um, wave Alchemy. And let's go to Process Drums. We have hi-hats. Uh, let's go to Classic Hats. <laughs> So this filth hat is kind of that classic 909 open hat. Let's put that on the eighth note. All right, so if we if we copy that out, so I want to shape this a little bit. It's a little bit too long. All right, so let's, let's stick with that length. All right, so if we listen to this hat and we put an EQ on it, a lot of low end information, so we want to cut that out. A lot of like reverb kind of ring right here. A little bit harsh, so I'm gonna duck a little bit there. This one actually has a pretty sharp transient, it sounds like. So we can, we'll deal with the transient later. Um, the next layer we're gonna add is a shaker layer, and this is gonna be a sound that's kind of like a ch sound. Uh, it's gonna be more of like a low mid in the frequencies like from like 500 to 2000 or something um, and that's gonna help to just give this a little bit more body this hat because right now it sounds very kind of metallic and this is gonna give it a little bit more of like that acoustic classic house sound so let's type in shaker here I think we should have some shakers yep just 
this is a good example of this fat cell one. Um, it's also providing a little bit of width. You can tell that the left and right channel are um, a little bit different on this sample, and that's going to cause it to sound a little bit wider. Um, so let's listen to what this sounds like. Let me turn this reverb off. So let's let's copy this the same pattern as this one. So you can definitely hear on the left and right that shaker coming in a little bit. Um, and you can hear it's adding a lot of frequencies without it. It's very digital kind of sounding. It's actually adding a lot of highs in this case. This shaker um, is, a, is pretty bright. You can see most of the frequencies are on the higher end. So maybe I'm going to look for a sample that's a little bit lower. Let's check this guy out. And this is where sample selection is really important, right? Because I want to pick something that is going to really work well with that first hi-hat. Let's try this. Cool. So this is a little bit too wide in my eyes. So I'm going to use this utility to bring this width down make it a little bit more mono, right? So if we go to zero, that's mono. Kind of hear how it's getting less volume on the left and right when we bring that down. So I'm going to solo these. I like this one a lot. It's still a little bit too loud. And let's copy this out. So you can see how adding that shaker layer makes it sound a lot more present in the track, that hi-hat. Even though we didn't change the volume of this one, we're adding this extra volume from this layer, and it's bringing with it all the frequencies that this one you know, may not have. A little bit loud. Oops, sorry, I got my loop all messed up. That's why it's kind of restarting there. Um, and then, you know, maybe we wanted a little bit of a transient, so like a tick sound. We could go back to our sample pack, go to hats, and look for uh, a hat that's very loud at the beginning. So usually a closed hat. Um, sorry, I'm in the wrong folder. Like this, right? So this, it's very loud right at the start. There is no kind of fade in like these other ones. And that's going to give this hat a little bit more attack right at the beginning. So we can shorten this up just like we did with the kick. Maybe a little bit too short. Let's take this all down. Find that the tick is kind of right here. Maybe we don't need as much highs. And this should sit a lot lower in the mix because we don't want it to kind of be aggressive and almost like hurt your ears. We want it to be pretty quiet. So let's let's listen with it. So I couldn't hear it at negative 15, so I brought it up to negative 10 around, and now I can hear it. I think there's a little bit too much mid, so I'm going to move this EQ up a little bit. Helps add a little bit of brightness. Without it, a little bit dull. With it, a little bit louder. So, um, you know, now what I like to usually have on this group, once I get all my layers done, is I like to put a little bit of parallel reverb. So this is a just a reverb. You can add your own. I'll show you how to make this. So. You take a reverb and you add it and then you right click the reverb and you go to group and then you once it's in an audio effect rack you click this little middle button with the three lines and you can see all your chains so this is going to be your 
a parallel chain and then you want to just make a, a dry chain this dry chain is going to have no effects on it so it's just going to be the way it sounds this is going to be your wet chain so i'll delete this show you guys and then in the wet chain you want the dry wet to be because it's the wet chain 100 percent and we're going to use the volume here to decide how loud we want that reverb sound. The reverb is gonna kind of gel the samples together and it's gonna make it sound like this hat is like recorded in a room as opposed to just existing in space. Um, and the, the decay time is very important. So the longer the decay time, the longer the reverb. Generally for this, I like my decay time to be around 500 milliseconds. So anywhere between 400 and 700, but usually, without it so you can see it adds a little bit of that tail it helps um, make it a little bit wetter it doesn't sound as like like it's just recorded in space it sounds like it's recorded in a nice little room maybe we do some EQing as well And, you know, with, with hats, sometimes you want a wide hat as well. So, you know, you can pan some stuff left or right. You can look for wide hat samples. Some samples like that shaker, they just have a little bit of difference in the left and the right. And that can lead to like a really wide sound. So um, you can have like a wide layer. Um, and a cool little trick to telling, to, to figuring out if your drums are, are wide or not is to, you know, take a track that you really like. Or maybe it's like in the style that you're trying to make. Um, and use that Voxango plugin that I was talking about. So, um, so in this case, we can hear the, a little bit of the kick. The top of the kick is pretty wide because we're just listening in stereo. The hat is pretty wide because that's the loudest thing you can kind of hear. And the clap must be completely mono because I can't hear the clap at all when I listen in stereo. <laughs> And then we can take the same effect and we can put it on our tracks master. So we can go to the master here, go to plugins, MSED. So interesting, right? So in our case, the clap is pretty, whoops, sorry. Nope, sorry, that we, I was listening to silence. That's why I was like, what? So yeah, we can hear the clap is pretty wide and the hat is pretty wide as well. The kick has almost no width to it, which is kind of makes sense because usually kicks are in mono. But let's say we wanted the clap to be less wide. We could, you know, put a utility here on our clap group. So again, we're listening just in stereo and we can lower this width until the clap, you know, is either mono in which case we won't hear it kind of like in this track or maybe we want it to still be a little wide but just not as loud as it is here so think of this as like the volume button for your width and so you know now we can maybe make the clap a little bit less wide so now the the, the hat is the the loudest thing in stereo um, and maybe you know we want that for our track you just generally want to be in control of all these things and so um, Ableton gives you the tools to do that so that's the the basics of drum layering uh, it you don't have to only do it with the kick clap and hat you can do it with percussion sounds I've done them with cowbells uh, using multiple different cowbell samples to get this really big cowbell. You can do it with toms. Um, anything that you really feel like the samples that you have isn't giving it enough um, punch or maybe enough width or maybe the frequencies aren't there. Um, layering can really help with that. And it's one of the first things I do when I make a track. I try to, you know, get this sounding pretty good because then when you go to add a bass line or you add uh, vocals or whatever it is, if you have a really good backbone where your drums sound really punchy from the start, it's going to help you make better decisions on whether uh, you actually like that bass line or whether that vocal fits. If you just have like a shitty hi-hat sample, it could be, you know, making everything else kind of sound shitty on top of it. And then, you know, you're not really making an informed decision. You're kind of 
your your knowledge is tainted by the fact that that hi-hat doesn't sound good um so yeah hope you guys enjoy this video i will be putting this little project file with all the samples in the discord channel so if you want to open it up and kind of look at this or use some of the samples you can grab it there um and yeah,